frustration. <laughs> frustration. Welcome to Hillsborough, everybody. I feel like I'm slightly... Hang on, let me try and correct that. Hope that's a little bit better. Welcome to Hillsborough. Welcome to Yorkshire. Uh, very empty Hillsborough now. I think I'm the only one left to sit here in the cold to deliver what is unfortunately a verdict that um, I think a lot of people will reflect on with real frustration and, and, and real disappointment that Norwich City from such a commanding position in this game have been unable to record what would have been a, a really important three points for their playoff charge. Uh, alas, not to be. And uh, this game has finished. No, the wind's gonna the wind's gonna ruin me. If it's not lawnmowers, it's wind. Hopefully, you can hear me. I'll try and I'll, I'll do my best to, to speak up. Um, yeah, this 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 will irk. I think David Barkner. This will irk those Norwich City players uh, because of the position that they found themselves in. One of comfort, one of uh, real. Uh, command really and they had an opportunity several opportunities in fact to go and kill this game and to win it pretty convincingly and they have not been able to do that here tonight and it's another away game unfortunately where uh, we'll be reflecting on dropped points and we'll be dropped, uh, reflecting on dropped leads as well because uh, it, <laughs> certainly with 75 minutes on the clock I'm not sure anybody inside this place um, envisaged the ending that we got here and um, that I think is, is what will prove so frustrating even if maybe there was a, a degree of, of, of predictability maybe but, but certainly a, a build-up of it in, in that second period so um, let's start right at the beginning uh, David Wagner made one change to his Norwich City 11 Danny Bart came in replacing Shane Duffy in central defence I think that's pretty self-explanatory really Duffy's been out with with a calf injury for uh, a period of time and um, this was Norwich City's third game in eight days he was obviously brought in quite prematurely against uh, against Leicester David Wagner said he'd been reporting some some tiredness and fatigue and, and that kind of um, helped I guess make that decision Danny Bart came in only his fifth start of the of the season um, and I thought he was okay. It, it, there was there was nothing too much really for him to contend with. Um, I thought when when Sheffield Wednesday went direct, they, they caused him and Gibson problems generally. But there wasn't the type of maybe distribution setbacks that we've seen in other games, and that's largely and, and this will probably be the theme of the first half. Really, I thought Norwich were able to get such command in the game because of how wrong Sheffield Sheffield Wednesday got their press. To be honest, they were they were late, and that enabled Norwich to to bypass it pretty easily, pretty routinely, and. Um, and it wasn't just the press, it was Norwich's counter-press that was so impressive as well. Uh, Marcelino Nunez was, was tasked with jumping on Barry Bannon, and not literally, as in, in terms of the press. And um, they, they created quite a few turnovers in high positions that created and constructed some really good opportunities. And if you look at particularly the second goal that Borja Sainz uh, scores, it, it comes from that moment and, and that opportunity. But um, there were a few before that. Nunez had a couple of, uh, of moments that they created through their counter-pressing and their ability to, to, to win turnovers in, in high positions. Um, and obviously, they, they, this, the first goal comes from a throw-in. It's a throw-in. Ashley Barnes flicks it on really well. I think Sheffield Wednesday will be frustrated with the way that they've defended it. But when the ball drops to Josh Sargent in those positions, he, he, he doesn't miss them. He does uh, routinely lap them up and it was 1-0. Um, and 1-0 and became 2-0 very quickly. As I said, Norwich created a... a, a a high turnover. Nunez then slotted Sainz in. He did really well. I think I haven't watched the replay, but Danny Royal was asked some questions suggesting the goalkeeper maybe could have done a little bit better with it. Um, and, and yeah, I think what we experienced in, in Hillsborough thereafter was a real sap of, of, of any confidence that had built up in this place. And um, they were trying to play it out. That was being met with, with pretty loud frustrations from the stands just over my shoulder there. Um, that forced them to go a little bit more direct. But again, because of the, the structure of their press, they lost confidence, I felt, in terms of what they were trying to do. They got a bit stuck. And that's when Norwich really should have gone and killed the game off. And they had opportunities to do that. Nunez, as, as I mentioned, cut inside, took one touch and rifled over. There was another shot that, that he put wide. Um, none fell uh, really to Josh Sargent from memory. Uh, and in the second half, uh, and, uh, at halftime, uh, and again, I, I'm sat there at halftime thinking Norwich are in complete control here. But it's one of those at 2-0, isn't it? You look at it and, and it feels like whoever gets the next goal, and it, it, it either goes Norwich's way and it's 3-0 and it kills off the contest. Or Sheffield Wednesday get it and, and they're invited back into the game. And uh, I think what, what Norwich expected and anticipated was probably the burst from Sheffield Wednesday that came after the halftime interval where, uh, you know, Danny Royal made, made four substitutions. He basically admitted it was all or nothing for them, really. He made, made a quadruple change, but completely changed the approach. They went direct. They played for long throws. They wanted to hit pieces. They... Um, they sort of went back to front very quickly and tried to dominate second balls. They were they were nasty. They they they, they did the ugly stuff pretty well, and that put pressure on over a long period of time. And um, Norwich again, up to the set pieces they conceded, did a relatively good job at, at, at dealing with them. Um, 
I felt some of the directness caused some problems. Cal- uh, Patterson's um, running caused some problems. And, uh, and the energy that, she- that Sheffield Wednesday played with and the robustness that they played with caused issues. And I think I looked at this game and felt it would always be tough because of what it, what came before it, that Ipswich game. And I think when you have such a high and you have that adrenaline and you have that pumping through your body, then you have to go three games later. To get yourself back up is difficult. And there's a reason why. And I put it out there um, on, on my social media channels earlier this week, why in, and, and this is now the fifth game in succession, after a Norwich City win over Ipswich Town, they failed to win the next game because that is such a hurdle to overcome. And you throw in the fact um, that, again, I think it was a Sheffield Wednesday fan found in terms of Norwich aren't very good, really, when they have to play away from home uh, fatigued, under pressure, when they have sort of midweek games. And, and I think the last midweek game they won, actually, in the Championship was when Onel Hernandez scored a late winner at Birmingham. Uh, and that was oh, yeah, going back to 22, maybe, I think, for that. That was that was the last time they've, they've won in midweek away from home. Uh, but obviously not on a Friday night. We're talking Tuesday, Wednesday, that sort of period. Um, and, and, and there's a reason for that. And I, I don't think necessarily it, it, it fell, but I, I never really felt Norwich were um, were as in control of this game as maybe the scoreline suggested. And that's that's largely because I, I felt they were being gifted quite a lot by Sheffield Wednesday, if truth be told. But they, they, they didn't do a lot wrong and they, they did punish them. I think the, the, the frustration that David Wagner has is that they weren't able to use more of those opportunities, particularly in the second half, where at 2-0 they had two transitional opportunities, which was how they, they struck about going to... To, to hurt Sheffield Wednesday, to get in behind, to cause problems, to get runners from deep. And they did that. Jack Stacey got in behind. It was a, a pass, I think, from Kenny McLean. Um, and Beadle makes a, a, a really good save. Marcelino Nunez has a free kick. Again, Beadle saves. But the big one is Gabriel Sara getting slotted through. And he's on his right foot. He's a left footer. But it just drags it wide of the post. It lacked conviction, really, in terms of the, the, the quality of chance. And, uh, and, and then, obviously, late on, uh, a, a deep cross and, and, and what Wednesday did very well was essentially, and again, we, we spoke about the robustness of their tactics, the, the, the change to what uh, David Wagner described uh, Danny Royal as, as the German Tony Pulis after the game. But they, they put so many men in the six-yard box. And if you put that in there and get enough bodies in there, then it does create opportunities and get enough blocks in there that it does allow someone to rise up and meet the ball. And that was Michael Ahekwa from the first one. The second one I need to watch back, but in real time, it felt like there were a few people, Angus Gunn included, that could have done significantly better. It goes to the back post, and, and maybe I'll retract that when I watch it back. So, with that caveat, uh, and, and Michael Smith is there um, to, to score. Before tonight, there's, there's been some chatter in the press room that Sheffield Wednesday hadn't scored um, a, a set-piece goal since, uh, I think it was 2020, uh, 2022, was the last time that they scored, back in League One. Um, someone said it was McGuinness, I think, who was formerly of Ipswich, wasn't he? Um, and I think he was he was the one that scored it. Again, that, that could be wrong, but that was definitely the chatter in, in the... In the post-match um, press conference room, um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, and obviously within that, there's there's lots of frustrations about about substitutions as well. That of course I, I'll speak about, but I think it's a very valid case that David. That both things can be true. I think the the case that Norwich City missed opportunities, missed good opportunities, is a valid argument and a valid construct as to why they did not kill this game off. Why there wasn't that. Um, crucial third goal which I think would have won this game for them and secured the three points that would have pushed them even further ahead in, in that playoff race particularly with Coventry losing to Southampton tonight um, so that's a, that's a solid argument and I, I also understand people's frustrations towards the substitutions why when chasing a game with a substitution available uh, he didn't go for Van Hoydonk he didn't go for Canabo uh, and you know I've spoken to, to David Bark in the post game and I, 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 there's there's still a frustration at the decision that was made in January and <laughs> I think he's made per- perfectly clear that he well, he wasn't the one that made it to carry a smaller squad and um, the realities of smalling of, of of going with a smaller squad is that you increase overload and 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 you you take risks maybe I think we, we saw a few players certainly towards the end that just looked like they were running on empty if I'm being completely honest Josh Sargent uh, was withdrawn after 60 minutes and uh, he was feeling a little bit his ankle in the first half there was some some conversations with the physios um, but again it's I, I understand why people are frustrated when they see Liam Gibbs coming on and not Van Hoydon coming on and, and, and not Kenna Bo coming on and, and, and these are valid arguments because the, the thing for me is that as you go later on in the season this is going to be the case now they've lost Liam Gibbs tonight who, who got a quad injury that David Wagner described as serious obviously they've got to go and scan that but any length of time really at this stage to pick up an injury would you know wouldn't you wouldn't have to do a lot now three four weeks probably to, to put you out for the rest of the season obviously 
the normal season, whether, whether the playoffs and beyond, we'll see. But uh, a quad injury is, is is not a great one. And he looked really upset and in, in quite some discomfort. That was two minutes after he came on. And, and, and the plan there was obviously to get him on and, and get his legs up the pitch. But the thing is, now you've lost Liam Gibbs, you're going to have to deep dig deeper further into your squad and at some point you are going to have to play these players and you are going to have to trust them with opportunities and that is where this maybe strategy of not exposing Sidney Van Hooydonk who's had four games as an unused substitute you know what what if Josh Sargent gets injured and suddenly you need him and you're pulling him almost out of the the cold and, uh, and into the fire that's a very difficult one to do you've got you know players on the bench Montoya, Kenabo, uh, Finley Welsh who are on there who uh, haven't haven't kicked a ball really they're not playing 21s football. They're not playing first team football. They're stuck in this kind of weird no man's land and their development isn't aided by that, isn't helped by that. And this is the dilemma that, that David Wagner feels he has. And this is, this is I guess, uh, the point that he is making, that he, he didn't want Chemeswa Poeta to, to, to leave. He didn't want Adam Forshaw to, to, to leave. They were decisions that were made by, by Ben Napa. And um, he clearly feels that that is costing Norwich City in terms of what he can do and the availability that he has from his bench. So with that context in, he, he then made the substitutions that he did. And obviously, you know, um, we, we saw Liam Gibbs come on and off again in, in, in the space of, uh, of a minute or so, uh, two minutes. It was a re- I'm not even sure he touched the ball. It was a really short cameo. There was a burst up field and then he, he kind of dropped to the floor. Um, and, and I guess it's, it's the last one, isn't it? It's, it's Borja signs off. Shane Duffy on and, and, and the optics of that are, are tough and, and they are tough and I think David Wagner knows that it was clear it was about protecting them the, at the other end from uh, the long balls and the set pieces and the throw-ins and there's no right or wrong here I, I think it's about intent sometimes and you have to show intent to try and win a game and I think that's what that's what irks people when you know they, they see they see Borja Sainz's number go up and see Shane Duffy's um, number being the one that replaces him and Norwich then went to a back three and it sort of killed the game there after there was a, 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 a couple of free kick and a throw in in, in stoppage time for Sheffield Wednesday but Norwich didn't create an awful lot after after that moment um, Ashley Barnes went up front Christian Fashnack came on on the right um, so yeah look uh, it's I, I, I completely understand those frustrations completely understand those the, those frustrations that people have around the substitutions and I think they're, they're perfectly valid but I think you you can have you, you can have and make that argument and also make and have the argument that Norwich City missed opportunities tonight and ultimately we can talk about substitutions and we can talk about all of those if Norwich City are more clinical if they are more ruthless in front of goal they win this game and win this game pretty comfortably and then we're not we're not talking probably about the other stuff so um, yeah, I, 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 I get it. I get it. And I get both sides and um, I get where David Wagner is coming from. I can see all of that. And it's a difficult one to try and construct. But And ultimately, he has to manage it. But I think the point in case that I keep making is at some point you are going to need Sidney Van Hooydonk. You are going to need uh, Tenebo, potentially. You are going to need Montoya if Sam McCallum breaks down. If, if you need those players and they're asked to come in on the back of what they've played and, 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 and the minutes that they've got or lack of minutes that they've got, that's going to be then very difficult for them to find performance levels at this stage of the season. And that is why it needs to shuffle it. But, but equally because you have such a small pool of players there that every time they step on the pitch, particularly when you've played three games in eight days, you are increasing the likelihood that they get injured. And, and, and that is the risk that Norwich are in at the moment because we all, we all know, we all see it. And Josh Sargent gets taken off tonight. They look a different side. It's one injury. It's it, it's one situation from from causing them real problems. So um, yeah, I, look, I get it. Um, and, and and I also think you know, and I'm trying to be I'm trying to be measured. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm trying to be measured about this. I think if you if you look at the two games, Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich. If I, I think if you just said to someone on Saturday morning, you get four points from Ipswich and, and Sheffield Wednesday. I think a lot of people would have signed for that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can tell me I'm wrong, but. Um, you know, let's say you flip the results, you've got a draw against Ipswich and a win here tonight. That looks and feels slightly different. I understand that that's not the case and it's the context of this game and the position that they were in um, that, that is the frustration. It is the frustration because there was a game there to be won and ultimately they, they haven't done it. And, and the set pieces themselves, I need to watch them back. But in, in real time, it just felt like um, Sheffield Wednesday crowded the, the, the box in the right way. And I, I felt the changes that Danny Royal made altered this, this dynamic and Norwich probably didn't have the same level of, of control or the same level of um, intelligence in terms of their pressing to deal with that because Sheffield Wednesday were bypassing it and they were they were splitting it and that, that made life very difficult but um, yeah the, the only real other moment they created was uh, again Barry Bannon puts a, a ball in behind Callum Patterson chases it Ben Gibson slides him and Bart getting a little bit of a tangle it falls for him and Angus Gunn produces a, a massive save otherwise we, we could even be talking about a defeat tonight so 
Um, yeah, look, I think this is this is this was always going to be difficult. It was always going to be tough because of the nature of it, because of the context of it. Sheffield Wednesday have only lost one in seven here now um, at home. They're, they're a better side than their league position suggests. Um, and they, they're making a real fist of staying up. And sometimes those teams can be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more dangerous as well. And, and yeah, look, there's an argument that he could have bought on Van Hooydonk, he could have bought on a bow, and then you go and try and finish the game. But then if, if you do that and you get done the other end, you get beat up. So it's, it's, these, these are the things that he, he, you have to weigh up um, as a head coach. And um, it's difficult stood here in, in hindsight, or it's easy stood here in hindsight to suggest maybe he should have thrown strikers on and all of this. But equally, I think it, I can understand maybe with the context of the game and how it transpired, why he didn't. Me personally, and it's just my view, I would have liked to have seen more intent to go and win a game that was very winnable. That's my view. And uh, reading the comments, there's a lot of views as well. But I can understand why he didn't do that. So, yeah, there we go. Look, the, the, the final point I would make is this, is this result tonight, and you look at the league tables and you look at the respective games in hand, it makes Saturday absolutely massive against Preston. Um, they're going to be well up for that. If Norwich win that, I think they take Preston out of the picture. If Preston win that, oh dear me, uh, <laughs> then uh, we are in a in, in quite the situation that maybe we didn't foresee heading into two Carrow Road home games. But yeah, not ideal result. I'll leave you from Hillsborough. Why does that say Chancery, by the way, and not Sheffield Wednesday? But anyway, that's a, that's a different point altogether. Sums up uh, <laughs> maybe that man's ownership. Pinkin.com, the place to go. Thank you for uh, for watching. And we will, of course, I'll, I'll be at Preston and we'll see you at Deepdale on Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your evening. See you soon.